guys, this is Ms. Bufford and this is video number seven in our acids and bases unit. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about neutralization reactions and titrations. So your learning goals for this video are to be able to predict the products of acid-base reactions that form water and calculate the molarity of an acid or base in a titration. So what is a neutralization reaction? Anytime an acid and a base are mixed together, a neutralization reaction occurs. There are different types of neutralization reactions. There are reactions that form water, which are between Arrhenius acids and bases, and then other acid and base reactions form conjugate acids and conjugate bases. In this video, we're going to be talking about reactions that form water. So when we're predicting the products of acid-base reactions that form water, these are going to be double replacement reactions that occur between Arrhenius acids and bases. To produce the products, all we need to do is list out the ions involved, switch their partners, and balance their new formulas using balance the new formulas using the charges on each ion, just like we did for precipitation reactions. So let's go ahead and take a look at our example up here. I have hydrochloric acid that's dissolved in aqueous solution and sodium hydroxide also sodium hydroxide that's also dissolved in aqueous solution. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to break each one of these compounds down into the ions that it dissociates to when it's dissolved in water. So hydrochloric acid will break down into hydrogen and chloride ions, and sodium and hydroxide will break down into sodium and hydroxide ions. And then what happens is our ions are going to switch partners. So this hydroxide is going to come over here and bond with this hydrogen forming a water molecule. And then sodium and chloride are going to come together to form sodium chloride. And so as you can see from this reaction, all acid-base neutralization reactions that involve Arrhenius acids and bases are going to form water and some kind of ionic salt. And that ionic salt is going to depend on which acid and bases we're reacting. So neutralization reactions can be really useful. Aside from just neutralizing caustic substances or changing the pH of a solution, neutralization reactions can be useful if you need to be able to determine the concentration of an acid or base. When neutralization reactions are used for this purpose, the reaction is called an acid-base titration. Some examples of places where titrations can be uh, useful would be in environmental science. Uh, maybe a scientist wants to test a waterway or a body of water to see how acidic it is, or maybe determine what the human impact has been as far as water acidification. Um, medicine, uh, people use titrations to determine um, how acidic medications are, the pH of medications. Um, in the wine industry, it can be used to measure the acidity of different wines that are produced. And in the food industry, it can be used to determine the acidity of different foods and beverages. Um, and in some cases, it can be used to determine the nutrients found in those foods. So the goal of an acid-base titration is to reach the point of neutralization, where the amount of acid and base are stoichiometrically equivalent, meaning you have combined hydronium ions and hydroxide ions in equal quantities. If you can determine how much of an acid or base of a known concentration is required to reach neutralization, then you can use that information to calculate the concentration of the solution that you, that you don't know the concentration of. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at what's going on in a titration. So we've got this setup here where I've got a ring stand and I've got this big clunky looking clamp. Um, this is called a burette clamp and it's holding a burette. And that burette is, is being held suspended over an Erlenmeyer flask. And so when we do titrations, we have names for each substance. Um, the analyte, which is the substance that we do not know the concentration of, always goes in our Erlenmeyer flask down here at the bottom. And then our titrant, which is the substance that we do know the concentration of, goes up here in our burette. So let's say our acid is our unknown. So I've got some hydronium ions shown down here in this, in this Erlenmeyer flask. And our base is gonna be our titrant. So we know the concentration of sodium hydroxide, but we don't know how much acid is down here. 
If we can add just enough of our sodium hydroxide to completely neutralize all of those acidic particles down there, then we've reached a point called neutralization where we, our moles of acid and our moles of base are equal and they're going to produce a neutral solution with a pH of 7. And in, in this case, we're dealing with strong acids and strong bases. Okay, when that occurs, it's called the equivalence point. And um, we know that we've reached the equivalence point because our indicator will change color and indicate that we, we shouldn't be adding any more titrant. And so we can determine how much titrant or how much of that base was required to completely neutralize that acid. And if we know that the moles of base and the moles of acid are going to be equal, then we'll be able to calculate the concentration of this acid in our analyte. Okay, and so let's uh, take a look at some examples of how to do that here in just a couple slides. One other thing that we need to talk about is titration curves. Uh, what a titration curve does is it plots the changing pH as more titrant is added or as, a, as more volume of titrant is added into that reaction. And so um, if you'll take a look at these graphs, we're going to be more concerned with the two on the left where we have strong acids and bases involved. Um, you'll take a look and you'll see that as we add more titrant, initially the change isn't very big in pH, and then we get to as we get closer and closer to our equivalence point, the change gets larger and larger to the point where it's just basically a vertical line. And we, we're just adding very minute, very tiny amounts of our titrant, and it's changing our pH a lot. And so the middle of this vertical line is where our equivalence or our neutralization point would be with a strong acid and base. And you'll see that that equivalence point is actually at a pH of 7. For strong acids and bases, that is true. If you do have a weak acid or weak base um, involved in your titration, then your, your, neutral, your equivalence point is not going to be exactly neutral. It's going to be slightly acidic or slightly basic. And that's because you have those Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases forming conjugate acids and conjugate bases that are, are you know, slightly acidic or slightly basic. Um, but we're not going to worry too much about those in this video. We're just going to focus on this titration curve with strong acids and strong bases. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and do an example calculation for a titration. And I'm going to read through the problem, and then we're going to talk about a couple different ways that we can solve it. So if it takes 0.043 milliliters of a 0.025 molar sodium hydroxide solution to completely neutralize 70.0 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, what is the concentration of the hydrochloric acid? All right, so what I want to do first is no matter which way I choose to solve this, whether I'm going to use stoichiometry or whether I'm going to use the modified dilutions equation, I have to have a balanced chemical equation. And so I have the balanced chemical equation already up here. Uh, if you are working on these problems, you always want to make sure that the equations that are given to you are balanced. Um, and if they're not given to you, you're going to want to write them out and balance them yourself. Okay, so in this problem right here, I have the hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide, and it's, it's yielding water and sodium chloride. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the information from this problem and I'm going to list it underneath the substances that it goes with. So these two, this volume and this concentration right here, go to sodium hydroxide. This is a value for hydrochloric acid. And this is what we're trying to find right here. This is our question mark. So <clears throat> I have a volume for sodium hydroxide of 0 0.043 milliliters and a concentration of sodium hydroxide of 0 0.025 moles per liter, that's molarity. And then for hydrochloric acid, it's telling me what my volume is. I've got 70.0 milliliters and I, it's asking me to calculate the concentration here. So that's my unknown. And I'm going to go ahead and use the modified dilutions equation first. And what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to first identify which of these is my acid and which of these is my base. And so remember when we talked about acids, they're the substances that have those acidic hydrogens listed out front. So this is going to be my acid. 
and uh, bases produce hydroxide ions in uh, aqueous solution. So that has hydroxide in it, and that's going to be my base. Okay. And so if you notice that I have the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid divided by the moles of the acid, that N is a variable that I have not listed out here yet. And what that is, is just going to be the coefficient from our balanced chemical equation. So how many moles do I have? If, I, if there's no number in front, remember, if there's no coefficient, it just means that I have one. And so I'm going to put a one there just to represent our, our value for N. Okay. And the same is true for the other side. So that is equal to the molarity of the base times the volume of the base uh, divided by the moles of the base. And so I'm going to use this right here to come up with an equation that's going to allow me to solve for the molarity of my acid. So this is, the, this is my unknown right now. And so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by VA. And I'm going to multiply both sides by NA. Sorry if that's hard to see. Just so I can get those that, that MA by itself, that's going to get rid of all everything but MA on the other side. So if I rewrite that neatly, the, mol, uh, the concentration or molarity of my acid is going to be equal to the molarity of the base times the volume of the base times the moles of the acid divided by the moles of the base by the volume of the acid. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my numbers and plug them into this equation right here. So um, I've got molarity of my base. Here's my base right here. This is the molarity for my base. It's going to be 0 0.025 molar. Then I have the volume of my base. Here's my base. There's my volume. 0 0.043 milliliters and the moles of my acid which is one one mole and then that's going to be divided by the moles of my base which is one times the volume of my acid which is 70.0 milliliters the nice thing about this versus stoichiometry is that I don't have to worry about converting my milliliters to liters. Um, so it's just a little bit a little bit easier. And then I don't have to worry about expanding this molarity into moles per liter, which I can do, but for, for this calculation, it's not super, it's not important. All right, so if I did that and I put all, all of this in my calculator, I would end up with a final concentration of 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth molar, All right? So, and, and I get this unit right here because moles cancels out, milliliters cancels out, and I'm left with molar, all right? So here is my concentration of hydrochloric acid. Now, if I was gonna do stoichiometry, what I would do is I, I need to start with the compound that I know the most information about. So I'm gonna start with the volume of my sodium hydroxide, and I'm choosing volume because I'm going to use my molarity as a conversion factor to be able to convert from volume to moles. Okay, so I'm going to start with my volume of sodium hydroxide, 0 0.043 milliliters, NaOH. And since that's in milliliters and I need to use this molarity, which is, has its volume expressed in liters, I have to convert this to liters first. So I'm going to divide that by 1,000. I know there are a thousand milliliters and one liter. And then I'm going to use that molarity to get me to moles. So one liter is equal to 0 0.025 moles. And now liters will cancel out, milliliters will cancel out. Now I'm in units of moles of sodium hydroxide, NaOH. Okay. And now I need to convert from moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of hydrochloric acid. And remember, when I set up my mole ratio, I'm using the numbers for my coefficients for that, for that mole ratio. So I have one mole of sodium hydroxide, and this goes on the bottom so that sodium hydroxide will cancel out, and one mole of hydrochloric acid in my equation. So moles of sodium hydroxide cancels out. Now I'm in moles of hydrochloric acid. And 
if I stopped here, I would know how many moles I have. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. If I do that, and I haven't pre-calculated this, so I'm going to have to put this in my calculator really quick. So 0 0.043 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.025. That is going to give me 1 point, um, want two sig figs, 1 1.1 times 10 to the sixth moles of HCl. And if I know that it took 70 milliliters um, of this of volume for this, then I need to convert 70 milliliters real quick to liters because I can't do, have a molarity expressed in milliliters. Uh, one over 1,000 milliliters. So that's going to give me 0 0.070 liters. And what I can do is I can take my moles, 1.1 times 10 to the negative sixth moles of HCl, and divide that by 0 0.070 liters. And that is going to give me 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth moles. Uh, molar HCl. There we go. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching Buffered Chemistry. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more chemistry help.